So examples of AI and data and PR are everywhere and they're integrated into everything we do. It's going to help the people who know how to use it well and will complement comms teams. But the important thing is to not get overwhelmed by the amount of data available and to focus on what's going to make the most impact for you. When I, I started in college, I didn't really know what I was going to major in. I uh, started in psychology, but once I got to those classes where you were kind of memorizing the parts of the brain, I realized that just wasn't really for me. Uh, but I did like learning about like why people think the way they do and like the factors that influence people's behavior. Uh, and I think that a lot of that ties into comms, especially internal comms. You know, if you're creating a message for inside a company of thousands of people, you have to think about how people are going to respond to what you're saying, how it will make them feel, will it make them feel good about their employer. Uh, so I do like that psychology kind of ties into PR in that way. Um, so when I was looking for a new major, I thought about marketing, but I wasn't sure about joining the business school. And so I took an intro to PR class and I kind of fell in love with it. Um, and I was lucky enough to be at the University of Florida, which has one of the best journalism programs in the country. And so while I was in my PR studies, I took a lot of journalism classes. So I took those reporting classes that journalists take. Um, I think that helped me learn a lot more about how they think and what their priorities are. Um, and it's helped my media relations work a lot. And it was also like kind of a writing boot camp. So if you made, you know, one mistake in your article that you were writing, you failed the class for that week. And so I got to become a very, very good writer through those journalism classes. Yeah, I think my favorite campaign would be actually here at Clear Street. So I'm a communications manager at a FinTech Prime Broker. Uh, we're about five years old, so we've really had to work hard to make a name for ourselves in an industry where a lot of the big names are like these big banks that everyone has heard of. Uh, we're kind of coming in and competing with those people. So uh, I joined in June of last year, so June 2022, right after we had our Series B funding round. And then this year in April, so April 2023, we had a second tranche of that funding round. And so I was able to work on the campaign leading up to that funding. Uh, and it really was a one-to-one -one comparison of like how the Series B before I joined performed versus the Series B after I joined. And I think a lot of the success that we saw, we saw twice as much coverage, twice as much top tier coverage. Uh, we got a very big exclusive for our funding. Um, I think a lot of that is uh, because of the work that we put in over the past year to build up our brand uh, through events and original content, consistent messaging, curating our advertising, and then really ramping up our media relations. So my first first encounter would have been in school, uh, my undergrad studies. So I took a PR analytics course where we looked at sentiment data around BP's response to the 2020 oil spill. So I was in Florida and it was the 2010s. So this was a crisis comms case study that pretty much everyone my age studied. Um, and then when I was at NYU, I got my master's in corporate communication at NYU. I worked on a thesis paper about the impact of comedy appearances on politicians' media presence. Um, so things like, you know, just going on SNL, make a politician more popular, does it make them less popular, does not have any impact. Um, and so that was also pretty relevant because that was around 2016. So that was really interesting to study that data. And then in my work life, I think it's been really interesting over the last 10 years or so to see how data and PR has evolved. Um, so when I was in school, everyone was kind of talking about how things were moving from print to online. And it was a pretty scary time for journalists and for the future of media relations. Um, and it totally transformed the way that we measure PR. So when I was at school, we were talking about earned media value or comparing like the value of an article that's earned media to the, like the same cost of putting an advertisement in that newspaper. But once things moved online, that wasn't a comparison you could make anymore. And so the industry really had to figure out like, okay, how do we prove our value now? Like, how do we show the, the value of our work? Um, and then sponsored content showed up. And so there were a lot of questions about how publications are gonna show that content is sponsored? How are they going to put the disclaimers on there? Like, is that compromising the integrity of journalism? Is it kind of just something we have to do now to keep the doors open? Um, so there was a lot of questions around that. It's been really interesting to see how the industry has responded to it. Um, and on top of that, like social media and all those other like streams that you can use in your PR tactics. So. Everything has changed so much over the last 10 years. And there is just like so much data available. Like you could go on Hootsuite or any social media tool that you use to post and you could look at like a sentiment cloud and your mentions and are they positive or they negative or you could go on LinkedIn and you can look at reposts or you could measure like how many articles you got and like were you in the headline were you not like there's just so much out there 
but you really have to focus on like what's going to matter the most to your organization and to the projects that you're working on um, and figure out how that data can connect you to the leadership and like what do they focus on like how can you prove your worth and your work to you know the company leaders too um, so what we really look at is media coverage we look at by month tier headline topic who the spokesperson was uh, organic and paid LinkedIn is important to us because we're B2B so followers engagement we also look at our visits to the careers page um, we run display ads so use that to test messaging Google Analytics and then advertisements so clicks performance reports uh, but it really is about like both using the data to improve on your campaigns and then using it to communicate what you're doing and how it's positively impacting the company. So, so a dream metric feature, I think it would have to be related to media relations because I think that out of all the different pieces of PR, media relations is one of the ones that it's hardest to show like the effort that goes into maybe getting one result. And it's so hit or miss, like you could spend hours on a pitch and then no one really responds to it or you could send something quickly to a reporter and you know you get a feature story uh, so i don't as far as i know something that measures the impact of media relations besides just like number of articles doesn't exist so i i would love to see something like that developed right now ai is helping the people who know how to use it and know how to leverage it uh, and it has the power to complement PR teams and improve workflows and uh, make things more seamless. Um, and I think that there are some people who are afraid that it's going to replace comms. And I don't, I don't really see that happening. I see it like kind of a side by side working relationship. Um, like, for example, I can tell when someone sends me something that they've written only using ChatGPT. Uh, but if you know, you're know you pitching a reporter and you use AI to find a list of reporters to reach out to, they're not going to know that you found their email using AI. So I think there are ways to leverage it to improve processes and save time um, instead of just replacing everything that you're doing with AI. Um, I did read a new BuckRec survey that said 57% of people who are pitching the media use AI to help generate ideas. I think it can be pretty helpful in that way. Um, it, you can also use it to sort through research, find, again, find journalists to connect with and build those lists. And I think it's going to be pretty interesting to see how it impacts journalism. Um, if publications start using AI to get articles out faster and the content just even like we have more and more content than we even have today uh, that'll of course extend to PR uh, I could also see a situation where journalists you know use AI to sort through all the pitches that they get in their inbox so there could be a case where you know PR has to figure out how to write pitches that resonate with an algorithm versus a person and get attention of the algorithm but I would say that one potential negative effect would be just the writing aspect of it it's just so important uh, to find, you know, to define a brand voice and continue that voice and to communicate your ideas properly through writing and communications. And so if, you know, people start leaning more heavily on AI for writing, I think we could lose some of that um, impact that the writing can have. So our goal is to have a single, single source of truth platform for every asset class, every country, and any currency. So for someone coming into a career in PR, I would think about uh, keep being yourself open to different industries. So I've, my first agency job was actually manufacturing. And so I worked with like paper machines and box machines and things like that. And I never thought I'd be interested in something like that, but it turned out to be pretty fascinating and it opened a lot of doors for me. Um, and then I moved into tech and then I did HR and now I'm in a FinTech and finance. So just be open to, you never know what you're gonna be interested in, be open to different industries um, and always be learning. Uh, PR is dynamic field, as I've said over the last 10 years, it's changed so much. So you could stay updated by taking courses, attending workshops, and reading industry publications. Uh, stay results oriented. So think about your specific objectives and delivering results that align with your goals or your clients' goals. Um, and remember that if you can't manage it, you can't measure it. And then I would say to network and build relationships. So not just other people in PR, but people who are outside of the industry, but who you work with anyway. So I mean, here we're a small team. I work with you know people in finance, people in engineering. Building those relationships uh, will help you throughout your career.